Hi everyone. Today I got something a little different. Um, so I'm going to be picking this Van Brand lock here. So here's the key. You can see there it's got um, seven pins inside. They match up to these seven uh, key pins right here. And it's got um, a couple tabs in here that match with these notches. So the key only goes on one way. You can turn it 90 degrees and the lock opens. So um, these are sometimes sold on eBay. They are often very overpriced. You can get these off of McMaster Car. Um, uh, I have no affiliation with McMaster, but you can get these off of McMaster. Uh, they are listed usually as um, padlock with no copy key, uh, so it doesn't brand it van lock, but that's what you'll get usually. Um, uh, buyer beware. So if it doesn't work out, I'm sorry, I'm, it's not my fault. Um, so uh, this is an interesting lock to pick because the hard part about it is not the picking, it's the tensioning of it. Um, so you can see here, this, this ring right here, this gray ring, this does not move. Um, this is just to keep the key in place. So the key kind of, the tab slides back here and then goes around the outside edge and then um, is stuck there. Uh, so this brass ring here, I'm not sure why that's loose. This brass ring here, this is the part, um, or this brass circle, this is the part that rotates. So in order to pick this, you have to put tension um, through the pinholes here and then pick the pins. Now, the most common way I see people do this if um, they make a tensioner just like this, of some music wire, and then um, there's a method that I'll talk about in just a second where you figure out which holes are the best to tension from and you put the thing in like this and you tension the lock and then you pick it just like this, poking kind of at these pins and setting them, finding the binders, pushing them in. They're a little tapered, so you gotta set them like this. Um, now, the, my tensioner is uh, not gonna work for this because um, I think I need to actually cut these parts down a little bit and then I need to shave these parts um, so that I can put my pick in over the top of them and still push these pins in. Um, so I'm gonna keep working on this to make it work, but I figured out for this particular lock, uh, I have a tool that is basically the same and it's these C-clip pliers. So you're gonna see me pick this with these pliers and I'm gonna put them in here and then I'm gonna tension the lock like this uh, and it's gonna work fine. Um, it's a quirk though, because these, these parts right here on my C-clip pliers are basically the exact length of um, some of these max depth pushes here. So uh, I feel a little bit like it's cheating and I'd like to get my music wire tensioner to work better, but that's what I'm gonna use today. Now, um, now how do you know which holes to tension in? Um, so this uh, method of figuring this out um, I learned from watching um, the video that um, Norlin did, uh, Michael Gilchrist, uh, and that is basically you pick a hole, doesn't matter which one, and you tension off of that one hole and that tab or that slot right here, just like this. And you go through and you pick one of these things here, Whoop. and you can see it's not the greatest way to do it, but... Um, you're tensioning this and you're trying to find, okay, well, none of these bind, that means I'm oversetting. Um, so that one, so basically that means I've, I've overset this if nothing's binding here. So I know that this one's not gonna work. So I can try another one here and, you know, keep going until I find, um, I overset that again until I find a hole that has actually uh, a good amount of depth to it when I pick it. So I'll go like this, maybe test these again. But you go around here until you find one of these um, pinholes that you can um, push the pin in quite a bit and it stays. 
Um, and on this particular lock, these two right here are the ones that have the most um, depth to them. So, and that you can see that on my key, but if I didn't have my key, that's essentially what I would end up doing is just kind of testing each of these going around until I found two that worked, um, that were, that were this, the maximum depth. So, um, but again, I still think these are too long and I can't, um, I would like to shorten them and then be able to pick over them. So, uh, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use my C-clip pliers, um, but that's how you would determine if you did not have the key, uh, which holes you would actually be, um, tensioning from. And I think I did that going around this way. I think I finally, I want to show you like what one of the, one of the good pinholes would look like, um, when you set it. So, so yeah, that's overset now. Here we go. This one's uh, could be a little more. Okay, so right there. So that one bound, but I got to push the pin in. Um, that one bound, but then I pushed the pin in really far. So I can tell now this one is deep. So that would be a good one. Um, so that's basically how you do it. You can see kind of this one's not as deep of a press as this one is. So um, you go around and you do that until you found two that worked well because um, you don't want to tension off this outside part it's totally a pain uh, i think that's it that i wanted to cover here oh this lock is unguttable um just so you know uh maybe destructively guttable but here you can see inside there is no way for me to get that screw out it looks like it's been ground um into a smooth shape so i'm not going to be getting this just picking it um and i'm not going to rotate it all the way i'm going to get it um, loose and then you'll see me turn it back and forth a couple times but if you rotate it too far more than what is this um, 45 degrees then uh, these um, key pins will line up with the next driver hole and they'll get pushed back out and you have to pick it again um, it only rotates 90 degrees to open so you'd have to pick it twice to open and then unpick it twice to close um, but I'm not going to do that today so uh, I think that is it. Um, with that, we'll get over to the picking. Okay, so here I've got my van lock. And... Got my C-clip pliers. And my pick. So, let's get this open here. And as was discussed earlier, so I know I'm tensioning off of these two holes here, so... Just see what I can do from a picking standpoint. So there I had to push this one in a little further because um, it was binding, but of course I can't can't poke it with this um, C-clip pliers in as my tensioner, So, but I can push right here if I think that's the binder and um, just push it in a little further. Feels like it's binding right here. that one. Back off 
a little bit. Not, it's not one of the ones that my pliers are in. This one right here, I think. That's good. Oh, there we go. Lots of good clicks out of that. There we go. Okay. So you can see... Now I'm rotating the lock, so it is picked. Um, if I rotate it too far past about there, it will relock, uh, but all the pins will be offset slightly. And so um, while well, the pins will be over into the next um, into the next chamber, the drivers and the key pins will match up. And then my key actually won't work because I won't be able to get it um, onto the lock because of the the limiters and where the pins are so i'm not going to turn it um but i will turn it back and you're going to hear and see everything pop back up so let's do that okay so lock is closed again um now my key is actually going to work so just to demonstrate that the key works here and there you go so that is a van lock uh, that is picked and um, again earlier earlier part talked a little bit more about the theory of doing that um, there you go that one is open all right this is an addendum to the uh, the previous movie because I did get my music wire style tensioner to work on this lock so uh, I feel a little bit better about this now so I'm just gonna pick it real quick again using my music wire tensioner here. It's still not perfect, but it works okay. Um, I definitely do need to continue thinning out the ends here um, because this pick that I'm using that I would actually prefer to use here uh, is still too thick, so I gotta use this, whatever this is, 15 thousandths um, thing that I have here that was made from a broken pick, and I gotta use this to do the holes where the, um, the tensioner is in, uh, which is not ideal, so. Again, you can see I gotta hit a lot of these pins just multiple times because they are, um, I think they're tapered inside. I would love to find a video of someone gutting one of these to see what's actually in here, but I'm guessing that these are tapered pins because they feel very tapered. And because of how often you do have to kind of go back and retap pins that you've already hit, uh, having a much smoother way of getting into these holes would be really fantastic. So, but this should still work. As long as I didn't just overset that pin right there.
this pin right here feels a little stuck. I wonder if I started to overset that one too. So you can see it is again um, open there, and I'm going to turn it back now. So there we go, with an actual homemade music wire tensioner. Um, this still needs a little bit of work, but uh, functioned just fine, great. Alright, that is really the end now.